24 to 6 lead for the Texas Longhorns, the number two team in the country, over the Oklahoma Sooners. And Dan, they've done it on big plays. A 15 yard jump ball in the corner of the end zone, 80 yard run, and a 64 yard pass run. You know, if you take away that 80 yard run by Jamal Charles, Texas has not been able to run the ball. Vince Young has not been able to break free, but he's done it with his arm with yeah. the, and with the big plays. And you got to give a lot of credit to Texas's defense. They have Rhett Bomar totally frustrated. His first half is one he'll want to forget. And the uh, the Texas offensive line is strong enough, big enough, and tough enough just simply to protect Vince Young. He's been available, and they've got him a couple of times, but not in a harmful way. You would think that uh, Texas would want to pound the ball now yep. against Oklahoma yep. with this big lead, yep. but uh, they have been sloppy with the ball in the first half. You'd want to be sure that they have better ball security here in the second. Well, Oklahoma now is uh, going to get the ball first to start the second half for play. I don't know see if they can crank up something. That ball is kicked to the sidelines. It's taken at about the 17-yard line. There's a penalty flag on the field. And uh, the return of the kickoff is to about the 25. Travis Wilson. Oh, there have been some laundry left laying on the landscape. And we'll see what that amounts to. Offside. Offside. Kicking team. Kicking team. Number, 18. Number 18. Fair penalty. penalty. Re -kick. Re -kick. Well, they had the ball at the 25. They could have refused it and gone from there, but I guess they have the feeling that uh, the, the idea was uh, to get the ball up in the air and uh, keep uh, OU away from a big return by backing him up five yards. They can pick up five at the other end. That's not necessarily true. Now, I'm, I'm wondering about this decision. I would like that ball at the 25-yard line if I'm a Sooner fan. Greg Johnson has a big leg. He can reach the end zones from here and pin the uh, Sooners back deeper than that 25. The intent on that one, obviously, was uh, to get it up in the air and uh, give his people time to come down and nullify return. Let's see what he does here. He might just go ahead and swing it full tilt. Let's see. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back, back, back to the six-yard line for Travis Wilson. And down he goes. So he's taken down at the 19-yard line. Todd Harris talked to the Longhorn coach Mac Brown when they came out of the clubhouse. Here's that conversation. Coach, great first half for you. Do you call off the dogs now, or do you go into attack board a little more conservative? Well, you're in a situation where OU is one of the winningest programs in college football. They're really well coached. They've got tremendous pride. This thing's not over, so we've got to start back like it's 0-0 and keep playing. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Tom. All right, the Longhorn defense now, if they can pin Oklahoma, can give their offense the ball back in good field position. But let's see what the Sooners can do offensively after they've had their meeting in the clubhouse. Juwan Jones is the back... Standing alongside Rhett Bromar, and he's got the ball cutting back into the middle. We'll get from the 19 to the 21. Time for our Pacific Life game summary. The first half stats. Texas is up 24-6 because their defense has held OU to only 2.1 yards a play. OU has four first downs, and they've been unable to sustain any drives because they've converted on only one out of eight third downs. Busiest guy on the uh, Oklahoma side so far has been the punter. And that's not good. Nope. Movement along the front. That might be five right there. Yeah. Chris Messner came up out of his stance. Chris Dead Messner was a starter at the beginning of the season. 79. Offense. Still second down. He's been moved. He's been dinged up some, and then he's been moved to help out uh, injuries at other spots. And right now, he's in there at right tackle because Brandon Braxton, is the big freshman tackle, is a bit dinged up. And remember, Oklahoma could have had the ball on the 25-yard line to start this second half. They've now back nine yards from that point, all the way back to the 16. And it's second down and 13. Back. 
It was intended for Thompson, and the only man who had a chance to catch it was Aaron Ross. Well, you can see in that first half the, the problems that this Sooner offense has had. And there's your busy day for your punter, Cody Freeby, with five punts. But, you know, Bomar is trying to throw the ball to a quarterback in Paul Thompson. Thompson has one reception. And right now, uh, this, this pass offense is in dire straits when your number one receiver is your backup quarterback. Got another flag. This one's thrown from the first away. Dead ball foul. Five-yard penalty. That's two in a row. Been a rough first half for the uh, young redshirt freshman taking a shot from Michael Huff there, one from Killebrew right in the chops. And then every time he runs the ball, it seems like there's three or four burnt orange jerseys ready to drill him once again. The ball goes back to the 11 now and becomes third down at 18. Well, the Sooners are going backwards to start the second half. Out of the end zone, throws it into the ground, and it is incomplete, and uh, that will not be a grounding call because there was a man in the general area, and he was being hammered. As Kiwan Jones, number 20 there, and there's another shot for Bomar. Threw it right at the feet of Kiwan Jones. No intentional grounding. Brian Orakpo, uh, who's another uh, freshman, he's playing tackle or defensive end that is for uh, Texas. Did the Sooners have a worse start to a second half down 18? Mm, yes they could. <laughs> Kick is out of there. The catch is made. And this is a fair catch. I thought his hand went up. Yeah, yeah, that's there's it. your flag. There it is. Aaron Ross is the cornerback who goes back in the front. And he had raised the hand and dropped it and made the catch and was defending himself. He can't run, though, after you put that hand nope. up. You don't see the official uh, carrying that flag in that uh, top pocket very often, do you? No. Nope. <laughs> Looks kind of nice. Must have been a present. He wouldn't do it <laughs> all. It was a lay of game on the receiving team. Gave a fair catch signal. Then ran with the ball. Five-yard penalty. First down. We're flipping our way through the the book on the assortment of penalties that have been called in this ball game today. Little mistakes, but in Oklahoma's case, they've been little penalties that have just humored. I'm out. All right, now here we go with Texas. Finally get everything organized, and the ball is resting at the 47-yard line, where it's a first down, and uh, Vince Young hands it away to uh, Jamal Charles, and Charles cutting back will get seven yards on the carry. Remember that a year ago, Oklahoma came in here and shut out the Longhorns 12 to nothing. And then uh, the season went along, and we wound up with Texas out against Michigan in the Rose Bowl. And the team that we saw in the Rose Bowl, it just seemed incredible to me. They could be shut out by anybody, 12 to nothing. Beaten, maybe, but not shut out. Shutting out that guy. Yeah. Vince Young. <laughs> they stay with the run. And they'll have it down across the 45. They're a yard short of the first down. That's for just a moment, for the sake of reflection, uh, have a look at what he did, some of the things that this fellow did in that Rose Bowl game. Yeah, he rushed for four scores, passed for another. But the incredible thing, on all four of his touchdown runs, he went in standing up against a solid, solid Michigan defense. If you go play Michigan in a ball game like that, you win by a point, and still your britches aren't dirty. 
That's some performance. This is big old Henry Melton, six foot three, 270 pound freshman running back, got a great vine, and uh, this is the second time he's been put in the ball game on third down and a long yard to pick up a first down, and it's the second time that he's failed to do it. Well, he's just running too high, Keith. He's six foot three, but look at how high his pads are. Dvorak, 94 there, gets underneath him and pulls him back and stops him short of the first down. He's a true freshman, and he will learn. They might want to think about backing him up a little bit so he can get more momentum going with all that 270s carrying. Remember Earthquake injured? Yes, I do. Oregon State. <laughs> Jamal Charles is back in there, and Dement Young, the quarterback snake, he goes for it, and he's got it. And did you see how low he was? Yes. Went between the guard and tackle gap, stayed low, and easily picked up the first down. He went right in behind uh, Lyle Sinline and Will Allen. Will Allen's 315, Sinline's 305. Blaylock's on the outside at uh, the tackle spot at 329. They ought to be able to knock down the corn crib. And you can see the improvement that Vince Young, since this game last year, how well he's performed. And in total offense today, he's just about at 200 yards. It's on the 42-yard line. Down the middle. Oh, he had him wide open. Billy Pittman was clean and free, and he missed him. Trying to get the ball between the linebackers. You can see Young saying he wanted him to flatten that route out a little bit, not uh, take it down the field so much. But again, you, you, you got to be worried if you're Oklahoma because Young had four or five seconds to find Pittman over the middle. Charles is back there with him. Oh, he, he, this time he misses Roman uh, Taylor. So that's twice he's had open receivers. Yeah, but he's, he's going to the right place. That was a man-to-man -man coverage on the outside with Taylor. And uh, the, for, the ball was forced to be thrown by the blitzing Sooners. So Young really couldn't wait on that one. The way you buy time is lofting it in the air, letting your speedsters run under it as he did earlier in the game when Pittman got that long touchdown. They go to the three wide out set again. It's third and ten. And he decided and he looked and looked and looked. There was nobody available in the secondary, and uh, finally the Sooners get to him. And again, it's those Sooner linebackers jumping him. Take a look at the uh, pass chart for Vince Young. You can see that uh, his big success. Obviously, when you throw a touchdown pass to either side of the field, down the field as he's done, the number's going to look real good. McGee lofts it up, it's the tail dragger, and uh, he's going to kill it pretty deep. Jawan Rankins at the 13-yard line. That's where the Sooners will start when we come back third down for the OU defense. Third and seven. Receiver waiting. I'm not sure that he was far enough to get the first down, though. David Thomas, the tight end. Mark by the uh, linesman is close. Penalty flag back uh, inside where the ball was thrown. That's going to be a roughing the passer. Oh. And you can see uh, Vince obviously agreeing with this call. From the end of the run, first down. And this penalty, because it's from the end of the run, will give uh, Texas great field position. There's the tight end open over the middle to Thomas, and uh, out of the picture goes the quarterback, Vince Young. Clint Ingram hit him. Yeah, hit him good, too. That one hurt. Penalty will put the football at the 29 of Oklahoma and first down Texas.
stop. Start. So quick. That's the football player in the peak. Yep. We've seen his uh, track speed straight ahead, but it's those quick feet. Stop like that, move laterally, then move down the field. Looks like he might have an ankle problem. You know, that big thing about that penalty, it looked to me like Thomas was going to be short of that first down. Yeah, I think it was. This, what he's done there, and, and, right, and look at the people that uh, he's moved ahead. Campbell, Williams, Benson. Are you kidding me? Ooh, that's, those fellows walk hell over the ground. They walk on air. <laughs> this is Selvin Young getting some work now, the junior out of Houston. And he works his way through the traffic for about three or four yards. We're in third quarter of play, 6.22 to go. Uh, it's a slowed game now. As Oklahoma has been unable to chip away at the Texas 24-6 lead. Yeah, they, they're setting their own tempo now, Keith. The clock is uh, their enemy of Texas right now. They, or their ally, rather. They just want to make it keep running. And they're doing a good job of just that. They used all of it that time, didn't they? Earned up the 25-second clock. The red game, number 10 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Time permitting, we'll have the thrifty car rental postgame report with John Craig and Aaron. Highlights, analysis, and stories from about the country. Now, if OU's defense has done anything well today, it has been preventing Texas on third down. They're just three out of 11 converting. And now a short third down becomes a long third down. Five wide outs. Thanks. Loop to the corner, and it'll be touchdown, Billy Pittman. won this ball game. Major Applewhite threw three touchdown passes. Vince Young has just thrown his third touchdown pass. You know for the point. Good. At 5.26 to go in the third quarter, it's now 31 to 6. Texas. Young finding Pittman against Johan Petit. And Pittman does a great job of battling for this ball. Ball is thrown just a little bit short. He sees it, grabs it, keeps his feet, hangs on to the ball. Look at Latimer with the pressure on the blitz. Again, it's a blitz by Brent Venable's defense. And once again, Young has the answer for it. Poteet didn't give up, but he lost the battle. And the touchdown goes to Pittman. He's making it look easy. Well, when he's on, he does make it le look easy. But normally, he makes it look easy running the ball. Take a look at our progressive drive summary. And this was helped by the personal foul, roughing the passer call against Clint Ingram. On a third down, when uh, Young found David Thomas for what appeared to be just short of the first down. It seems like every one of the penalties Oklahoma's had today has really been a heavy. This is Travis Wilson getting toward the sidelines and finally pulled down. Back down from behind by one of the Texas DVs. That would be Brendan Foster. But it's still a big return for the Sooners who have not had a whole lot to clap about. Uh, now Wilson is down on the sidelines. More bad news for the cream and crimson.
has happened so often on a tackle. The uh, tackler will get the legs. You see, I think he got hurt when he was swung over the tackler when he came down. Well, let's see what the Sooners can do with possession at their own 42-yard line, trailing 31 to 6. Omar throws quickly. The pass is complete to Manuel Johnson. And Johnson, uh, he gets three. Up to the 45. Yeah, I got to go to the hurry up offense now. 25 points down and five minutes to go in the third. No choice. And watch Texas tee off with their defensive line now. Get rid of the ball in a hurry. Over to Gutierrez. And he's down right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing. I think one thing that Texas has shown here that uh, traveling north and south is rather difficult against them. But uh, going east and west, it's impassable. <laughs> they are a veteran team. A lot of seniors on this uh, front four and in their linebackers and in their secondary. They've been here and they've done it. Although they haven't beaten Oklahoma. Third down and seven. They're trying to break Oklahoma's five-game win string. Bomar reaching to midfield. But he's still two, two and a half yards short of his first down. And so it's fourth down. Uh, you know, this just kills Stoops to have to go for it. Or to have to bring out the punt team and not go for it. Well, Charles heading to the locker room. Brett Bomar may be heading to his locker room after that last hit. He came up limping. Travis Wilson walking down the sideline over there. Looked like he was going to run. But he's coming back now, walking slowly. See Charles with his shoe off and examining that left ankle. Eighth punt. By Cody Freeby, they don't punt it. They snap it short. And uh, J.D. Runnels, the fullback, fighting, trying to get to the first down marker. I don't believe he made it. Not a very imaginative fake punt play. Runnels is a fullback, 237 pounds. It just took the ball from the direct snap and went right up the middle with a flying wedge. And you're right, Keith. He's short of the yellow line, which is unofficial, of course, but it's awful accurate. There's Runnels right in the middle there. And he takes the snap, and uh, they try to get a good push going. He's reached with the ball, knowing he was short of the first down. And the Longhorns with another good play. Here's that yellow line. Let's see if he reached the ball past it. Yeah, he certainly did. Boy, bad mark for the Sooners. And another break for the Longhorns. He was past that yellow line before he reached the ball out. That is unofficial, that yellow line. They're short by the length of the ball. Not only is that yellow line unofficial, so am I. <laughs> but they may take a look at it, Keith. You know, they can review this. Well, Mr. Laurie is a replay man, an accomplished referee of many years in the Big 12. If his brother's on the... Going to take a look at the replay of the last play. The officials, Cleet Bakeman's a head lineman, Greg Burks, the field judge, Tom Quick, the umpire, Tom Keeling, the line judge, Homer Jackson, the back, and the side judge is Phil Lowe. This is really a good angle to show this. You can see he's just about to the line. Now he's across the line. Now he reaches well past the line. That should be a reversal and a first down for Oklahoma. 
They've reversed 14 so far, I think they said in the conference. After looking at the replay, the ball will be played on a 47 and a half and a first stop. So well, that's a reversal. Good use of the replay. Yep. And a break for Oklahoma. Now let's see what they can do with it. They finally get one, huh? <laughs> Bob must have been thinking that the, that the whole tunnel was dark today. Hey, you got to wonder about uh, Travis Wilson, his health. And remember, Rhett Bomar limped off the field. And he's limping back on. Yeah. And Wilson is out there with him as well. in front of him so he pulls it down and takes off goes into a head first dive that's dangerous they mark him just short of the 40 they got to go inside the 38 to get their first down so they're looking at two and a half yards at least maybe close to three Taking a lot of time too, getting things squared away at the line of scrimmage. Well, that won't work. That was Kiwan Jones coming back to run the inside slant, and there was nothing there but burnt orange. Yeah, Michael Griffin came out of his free safety spot and really finished off this play. Another tackle for. Griffin, he's the second leading tackler. Watch him read this uh, sweep play, basically. He just comes up, lays that shoulder in, and Jones goes down, down sideways. And it's third down and short three. Oh, my goodness. He had his man. Well, he picked that he, picked off. He got intercepted. He threw the ball. It bounced off the shoulder pads of the receiver Johnson and Michael Griffin dove in there and intercepted. Looked like the ball came down on the receiver's chest and, and Griffin was just there to rip it off. Little slant route here for Johnson. Bobbles it. Bounces it. That's a good call. That ball was in the air and Talk about being right on the spot and down on another spot goes the quarterback, Bomar, one more time. He'd be sore, sore, sore. He'd Tomorrow. be sore in about 40 years from this game. <laughs> 35 yard line. And there is Vince Young getting loose. He's the block. Got people tracking him and they finally take him down. Just as he crosses midfield and picks up another first down. And another update now from John and New York. That's an upset of considerable di dimension. This is Selvin Young. Fresh legs. Finding some running room. He's going to pick up about six yards on the carry. Maybe seven. Tomorrow night, 8 Eastern on ESPN. The Cincinnati Bengals, who are undefeated at 4 0, will go down to Jacksonville to battle the Jaguars. And then on Monday night at 9 Eastern on ABC, we'll have the San Diego Chargers and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Oh, Chargers. <laughs> Somebody jumped in the other day, though, didn't it? Yeah, they jumped all over New England. Yeah, they beat up on New England. Yeah. That ball is given to Young again, and Selden getting in some work. will pick up a first down for Texas, as the Horns now are working on running the ball out of this particular formation. They're doing a good job of, of calling the right play at the right time. The, the Sooners had another corner blitz coming that time from Anya Nagetcha, and that's exactly where Texas ran the ball, into that vacated area to pick up the first down. 39-yard line. 
31 to 6 and we're inside a minute to go in the third quarter. Sooners uh, might have got away with uh, offsides there because uh, Ingram was blitzing from this side and he was a little bit ahead of things but that's all right he got away with it. Clock ticking along and we go inside a half minute to go in the third quarter and the sky is blue and the sun is bright and the temperature very pleasant now and the folks a couple hundred thousand of them probably have come to the fair. Going into the evening, the crowd is 75,452 here at the ball game. Hitch Young's pass incomplete. And that stops the clock with one kick remaining. They ran Lima Swede at DJ Wolf. <laughs> This is such a unique uh, situation in the stadium, Keith, with half burnt orange, the other half crimson. And one side is always cheering, and the other side is quiet. And so the players really can't get an indication of how well they're doing unless you look at the scoreboard. But body language has a lot to do with it, too. You look over there at the Sooners, and they look totally defeated right now. And look at the scoreboard, you know why. Big plays. Do, a funny th do funny things to your psyche, don't they? Well, you know, some of the biggest plays in that first half was Texas recovering their own fumbles. Right. An opening kickoff of the game, Gerald Brown got on his. Vince Young was hit from behind. He fumbled, but recovered it. Third and eight. Goes to the first down and gets it as he completes the pass to his tight end, David Thomas. And it's 31 to 6 after 3. ABC Sports presentation of college football back after this message and the word from our ABC station. Here we go to the final quarter of the 100th game between the Oklahoma Sooners and Texas Longhorns. We're at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. This is the scoring by quarter to this time. 14-6, 24-6, and now 31 to 6, Texas is in control of the ball game, and they have the ball, moving it again toward the Oklahoma goal line. Selvin Young has uh, moved into the backfield, replacing Jamal Charles, who looked like he might have sprained an ankle and went to the clubhouse. And uh, I think we've changed quarterbacks, too, for Texas. Colt McCoy, I think, is going to be the... No, well, Young is still there. Colt McCoy has warmed up, and uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, Nordgren is also warmed. I was getting warm, too. Were you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you get to a situation in the ball game where I think uh, Mac Brown might consider putting Vince Young on the bench. Well, you always can have an injury. There's no question about that. And, and an injury to Vince Young at this part of the season with still some tough games coming up and with big dreams ahead of them, uh, would be ob absolutely critical. I would think that after this drive, perhaps that uh, Vince would take a seat. Yeah, if they put it in the end zone, that would uh, run it up to a substantial margin. And uh, it's obvious too that uh, Texas is content to run the ball because by running the ball, they control the clock. And the longer they.